Anyway, if you don't know, if you're a visitor with us today or, uh, you, you know, you just, you've kind of been out of the loop, uh, Tuesday we lost just one of our, not lost, she transitioned out of this world into the next. Uh, Cheryl Brandenburg, I, I point here because they sit here. Donald will be back. The call remains. But, um, you know, we're going to miss her. And uh, it's sad. But, you know, we're sad for ourselves. We're not sad for her. You know, it's an interesting thing. As we were going through the message and going through the service yesterday and reading all those passages and, and just thinking about it, you know, Jesus was, he was very specific and very intentional about giving us a message. He's like, look, it's just, it's just sleep. It's just sleep. In my eyes, they're just asleep, you know, and you will be together again. You know, it's almost as if, and if you're a visitor today, you're just going to have to kind of bear with us <clears throat> because we're all kind of those of us that are connected with her and this is our home and this is our family, you know, we're just kind of reeling and we're uh, processing and so just bear with us. <laughs> but, you know, I, I was when I was thinking about her and, and not in some strange way, but, you know, he heaven is not distant. You know, we are not c disconnected from it. The dimension, the kingdom of heaven is all around us. We actually live within it. You know, it, you can almost think of it in terms of time, right? You can't define time. You can't see time. You can't hold it into your hand, but yet you're in it. The dimension of time, right? It affects everything. Just look in the mirror if you wonder about it. And it's there, <laughs> right? It, you move around in it. The kingdom is the same way. The kingdom of God is here. Jesus brought it here. It came with him. Amen? Amen. And so I'm not trying to say that it's like we've got some ghosts of our loved ones floating around, but there's not a disconnect. You know, it's, it's almost as if they just go from one form of energy to the next. They're just in that place of perfection, and, the, and they're alive. And she is, you know, with Jesus. So, you know, I, that's my heart is that we would grasp an eternal perspective, a kingdom perspective of what it's like to just shed this temporary body and just kind of transition into that, you know, higher resonant dimension, however you want to say it. I don't know. I like to think of it in terms of not mysticism, but something that's relatable, you know, that Donald is one with her. They will be unified. And it just makes me think about <clears throat> where we are as the body of Christ, you know. We have one mandate, love. It really is. That's what we are called to do. That is why we are created. We are an expression of God's love into this earth, into this planet. We are love children that He wanted. You are breathing air because God wanted you. Not one mistake. Not one mistake. And you fulfill your purpose when you acknowledge there is a Creator, my God, and He loves me. And, you, and then your heart naturally responds to that love from Him, that's why we're here. We messed it up because God gave us control of it. But in the midst of it, we are working to be, be leakers of that kingdom in this dimension until He sets it completely right. Amen? Can you leak? Can you just kind of leak the kingdom? You know, the best way to leak the kingdom is love people. You know, I was thinking about this. I was thinking about Cheryl. <clears throat> You know, people are, are like seeds in our life a lot of times, you know. And, and seeds that get planted produce different kinds of fruit. Jesus talked a lot about sowing and reaping and farming and, and you know, helped us understand kingdom in terms of <laughs> seed and growth and, and, and described himself as a vine dresser, you know, the gardener that takes care of the garden and he goes around and he's not... He's not looking for things that are bearing bad fruit so he can throw them away and burn them. Those are horrible <laughs> translations. He's looking at this garden and he's like, I value this. I value these plants. I value these vines. They're growing within me and I want them to produce more fruit. So what he's doing is he's going and he's tending and he's helping us and he's speaking to us and he's moving and he says, this is not helpful for you. Let's tweak this a little bit. Let's get rid of this a little bit. 
uh, affirming to us that we are his children, but also working in our lives and in our hearts and in our mindsets and in our desires, how we treat other people. And I'm telling you, if you want to display Christianity, if you want to display the power of God, if you want to see God move, if you want to see fruit in your own life, if you struggle with repetitive sin, the best way is to fully acknowledge God's love for you and then turn that love toward other people. You know, quit sitting in your sorrow. Quit sitting in your guilt and your shame and your condemnation and saying, well, you know what, one day, one day, one day I'll be the kind of Christian I'm supposed to be. Just love. Step out. Act in love. Amen? I have, this was really the only passage that was on my heart <clears throat> today. And we'll jump over here into Ephesians 4. Always be humble. Always be gentle. Be patient with each other. You know, I, I kind of let's let's almost just use this as a meditation for just a moment, right? Like 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 a devotional. I don't know if you do devotionals, but when I do devotionals, what I like to do is if it's a passage that I'm meditating on, you just kind of stop and you sit within each idea, right? You just kind of stop and you sit. Now, if when you go into the word, it speaks back to you condemnation because where you are lacking holiness or righteousness in your behavior then you are using the law to uh, measure your heart. You're using the word to compare yourself to behavior rather than using it to birth something within you. You see, because you can take scripture and you can look at it and you can say, well, I'm not doing that very well. Well, then I'm not doing that very well. Man, I'm just worthless. Or you can take it and say, humble, Christ within me is humility. True humility is to lay myself down and say, you know what? Yeah, I don't have this working in my life. However, Christ is in me. The Spirit of the living God dwells within me. And all I can do is drink deep of that wellspring of life that is within me. So when I sit within a passage like this, I let these attributes rise up within me. It's almost like a tuning fork. You see these things as something that's tuning you and developing and resonating the character of God within you rather than looking at it as a source of guilt and condemnation and lack. Are you with me? Man, if you can do that with the Word of God and let it, let it awaken you and let it, let it feed you and let it nourish you rather than letting it condemn you, you see what Jesus truly meant. You know, Jesus would preach the same law as the Pharisees, but it was like in love. He showed us how to apply expectation through love. Performance-based religion, and, and even in Christianity, says, here comes someone in adultery. You know where adultery is wrong, right? You know that you shouldn't have done that. You should feel really bad. You know God's disappointed in you. You should be punished. Yeah, I feel really bad. Okay, now we can give you some hope. That's backwards. What did Jesus do? Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Those of you who've never sinned, feel free. Oh, okay, okay. Step number one, then he turns to her. Where's your condemners? Oh, nowhere. They're gone. No condemnation. When you truly encounter Jesus, there should be no condemnation. When people encounter Jesus in you, no condemnation. Now, whatever is in their heart will determine how they respond. That's not your stuff. Where they go with it isn't your responsibility. But when they encounter you, are you leading with, you need to make sure that they know that they're wrong? Or, no, I'm just going to set them free. Almost to the point where they feel like they got away with it. That's what scares religion about a church like this. Well, you guys are soft on sin. You guys are making people think that it's just okay to sin. Well, you know what? That's what they said about Jesus. That's what they said about Paul. So, do your thing. As I said, I'm going to ramble today. Bear with us. <clears throat> Always be humble. Now, this is the body, you know? This is Paul speaking to the body. He's talking about how the body has been infused with capacities, you know, if you know this particular passage, where he's going is when he talks about that God has given gifts to the body of Christ, apostles, prophets, teachers, evangelists, pastors. 
And we look at those, and you may have been taught that there are prophetic anointings or gifts, as if God's going to give you a package that's yours, but not yours. And it's some individualistic thing. But when you really understand where he goes with it, gift is the word grace. And grace, more than anything, is an influence from him within our heart that brings capacity. So it's like he's saying, here's the body. And I've placed within this body the capacities, the influences, the strengths of prophecy and teaching and pastoralship, you know, all these aspects, all these capacities within us, and all of them are in all of us. One spirit, one father, one baptism. You all have the capacity to prophesy to one another and lift each other up. You all have the capacity to be a teacher in someone's life at any given moment. Now, God might say, okay, I want you to operate as prophet within this body. That's fine. But, but in general, what he's talking, you know, we get, we have an individualistic, segmented version of Christianity rather than a level playing field. Everybody's same. No Jew, no Gentile, no male, no female. Everybody, a child of God, infused with the spirit of the living God. And you might turn this way and you function in the capacity of teacher. You might turn this way and you function in the capacity of prophet. You might turn this way and you function in the capacity of an artist or a nurse or a gas station clerk that smiles at people, whatever it is. Are you with me? So collectively, always be humble and gentle. Be patient with each other making allowance for each other's faults because of your love. I mean, there's just no deeper subject. Make every effort to keep yourselves united in the Spirit. I mean, what if the body of Christ did that? Think about that. Make every effort. To keep yourselves united in Spirit, binding yourselves together with peace. How beautiful that would be. For there's one body, one spirit, just as you've been called to one glorious hope for the future, eternal life in Him. There's one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all who is over all, in all, and living through all. Now, do you, did you, like, this is a linguistic uh, technique that the author is applying here to make a point before he gets into the next subject when he starts talking about gifts. But he goes out of his way to use the word one many times to show the unity rather than the segmentation. I think he knew what we would do with it. I think he knew that we would start splintering ourselves off. Well, I'm this, and I'm this, and I'm this, and I have this anointing, one anointing, one spirit, unified, no one above another, loving. And if the body of Christ could grasp that, you know, if we could walk in this unity, it is in John 17, you know, Jesus is praying his last prayer before he gives himself up to be arrested willingly. He's praying. I pray that they would be one as you are in me and I am in you and I'm in them and we're together, this one big love bundle so that the world will believe. It's so powerful. It's so powerful. Now, you watch how this body just transitioned through, you know, what happened. And there was one of the days in the hospital with Cheryl, where we just gathered and worshiped and prayed, you know, and it just happened. I mean, it was just like, this is just, this is our family. This is just what we do. And then you see people walking by, and we heard that it it rumbled through the hospital, and days after, the staff's talking about it, and it's like, you know, what what if things like that happened in the body of Christ that just spilled out into the world, you know? I mean, you might have a world that says, 
I don't know about that six day creation. I'm not sure about all those animals in that boat and that, you know, the whole Egypt thing. I don't know. But did you hear them in there? Did you see how they treated one another? Did you, did you see how that marriage focused on Christ and walked through that difficulty, that challenge, that struggle? Did you see how they, we, I know them. I know, how in the, they're done, but they weren't done. Something happened. What, what happened? Christ in them. They unified. They, they buckled down and loved one another. And the world looks at that and says, there's something worth believing in that. Miracles are fine. We want miracles. Miracles aren't going to convince the world. Some people, they will. Miracles bring people relief. We want that. I believe in them. But what he said was what, what would convince the world is our love for one another. Humble, patient, forgiving one another. You know, under the old covenant, it was if you keep these, then you will be forgiven. Under the new covenant, it's since you have been forgiven, forgive one another. Jesus reverses everything. Everything gets put back into relationship first, his love for us first, knowing our place in his body, walking in his love, responding to his love, and, and then you turn toward others. You know, the angriest preachers on the planet are the ones who are under the most condemnation in their own hearts. The angriest preachers that are preaching the hardest against sin are the ones that are struggling the most against it in their own lives. You know, back when all the televangelists were sinking ships, they all, all those scandals started coming out. And I'm not trying to I'm not trying to tear down the body. I'm preaching unity and I'm bringing that up. I'm not, I'm not trying to be contradictory. I'm just showing what law does, what a heart that leads with legalism, a heart that leads with behavior and performance, what a heart like that does brings back condemnation. And we're not just talking about a hippie Jesus where you forgive other people, you just overlook other people's shortcomings. No, Jesus dealt with the woman's adultery. He told her, he said, look, you're free. However, stop it. If you don't, it's going to get worse. I'm telling you. I'm just telling you. I'm just telling you. You keep on, it's going to get worse. But I love you. Paul, don't sin. But if you do, you have an, remember, remember, you have an advocate with the Father. Remember, Jesus has paid the price for you. Remember, you are forgiven. Are you with me? Absolutely. Church discipline. I remember somebody was coming here one time. They were, you know how people do. They show up and they check you out. <clears throat> Looking for a church. Let's see what, how these guys are going to treat us in here. To, went out to eat one time with these people. Tell me about church discipline. You're probably not going to stick around here very long. <laughs> Walk them through love first, grace, empowerment. And then if they let you in their heart, then you can help them deal with their sin. Have you ever one time thought your sin was okay? So, you know, back around to Cheryl. And I just kept hearing over and over and over and over from people, love. She never made anyone feel condemned. That's probably not true, but you know, nobody's perfect. But in general, when you encountered her, that was how she was, you know? And back to this idea of what I was thinking about people being seeds. And it's not that we have to judge, well, what kind of seed are you? But you just think about the fruit and how people talked about her, her being planted into people's lives. You know, what if we thought about ourselves as, okay, I'm getting ready to go into these people's lives right now. What kind of seed am I right now? What kind of seed am I? What's in me? What am I allowing to be within me right now? Because I'm going into this situation. I'm going to work. I'm going to this family thing. I'm going to church. I'm going to whatever. Whatever it is that you're going to. What's going on on the inside? Because that's what's going to come out. 
And so often we let the stuff, our lack, our shortcomings, identify, you know, define us. It's like we carry the self-portrait around in ourselves and it's like fixed right there. In any situation you face, you look and you're like, okay, boom, I've hit this situation. Now, who am I? Okay, here we go. Now, that picture might be you're an angry, judgmental, mean person because you just don't like yourself. Boom. I don't know why they're so mean to me all the time. <laughs> or you look inside and you say, you know what? I am someone that God loves. I'm not perfect out here, but, oh, man, you know, thank you, Lord. You love me. You died for me. I have your life within me. Now, here we go. Okay, yes. I don't like that. However, God loves them. I'm going to infuse what's in me in this situation. I see that they're not living, act, you know, according to the standards that God would want. But I know that the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. And I know that mind renewal is the path of transformation. Me convincing them of how bad they are and showing them how bad they're breaking God's expectations is not what's going to convince them to crack their heart wide open and let Him love them un into transformation. You know what I mean? We know this stuff. We know this. We do know this, right? Like it's written on our hearts to live this way. Like right now, I hope that you're feeling it. I hope that you're thinking, okay, I'm gonna, I need to start. You know, you start in the mirror and then you turn this out toward the world. It, we talk about it in here all the time. You know, we, there's, it's interesting how God moves, right? I think this community is ready for a strong focus of new covenant gospel. Now, every church preaches the gospel. We have just been called to focus on it. It's all we preach and all the facets that come out of that. Well, that's what you're looking for? Come back. But I'm telling you, it's, you know, I see lots of new faces. It's interesting how what God is doing. You know, I don't want to try to mysticize that. We'll just, we'll just let the gospel do what it does, bear fruit. Amen? Amen? But what if the body of Christ could unite? I don't mean like we all start believing the same things. Ain't going to happen. <laughs> you know? But, but, but rather than... <clears throat> okay. You feel me? <laughs> and I just see that what, G, what Cheryl meant to this body, and she just was just this plant, this seed that God put into this body that will never be forgotten, will continue on. And, and you, you listen to Donald, you know, they felt called into healing ministry. They felt called into together to lock arms and, and pray with people and see the healing power of God move in their lives. And then this happens. One thing we do know, it wasn't God. Cancer is not in God's created, creative vocabulary. It's the result of what we've done to this world. You want it, like I said yesterday, and I say it all the time. <clears throat> if you want to know what God wants, look in guard, the garden, look in Eden before we messed it up. Look in eternity after He fixes it all, and then He what He did on this planet when He came here as one of us. That's what God wants. Everything else is what we've done to it, but in the midst of it. We've got these kingdom seeds dwelling within our heart and we carry the very presence of God. You are like the Ark of the Covenant. If you know much about the Old Covenant and how special that was, the presence of God followed the Ark. It was the tabernacle that He would go into and all the sacrificial stuff. And, and it, it was the avenue of relationship with God through which people would encounter God's presence on this planet. You, as a believer on this planet, are the living Ark of the Covenant. The presence of the living God dwells within you. Don't you know? Paul says, don't you know? 
the Spirit of God dwells within you. Don't you know that? Because of that, because of this thing that He's done within you, live in agreement with that. Live well so that you resonate that, you know? Rather, Religion would say, <clears throat> live up to it. Here's the standard. You better do right. You got to get right with God. God made you right through Christ. And the more you understand what He did for you and the more that you can just let yourself be saturated and influenced by His presence, primarily understanding His love for you, man, it just spills out. Those of you that want to see the gifts of the Spirit move through your life and you desire it, let Him love you radically. Where when you look at someone, you don't wonder, well, what's going to happen if I pray for them? You're just moved with compassion for this person. I've got to get my hands on them. I've got to love this person. Now, I don't think Jesus for one time ever wondered, well, what if, I, what if they don't get healed when I pray for them? I don't think he ever worried about outcome. Now, it's easy to say, right? I mean, it's easy to say because we all have questions. We all are reeling and wondering. You know, Jesus went around doing good, healing all. He prayed for our friend. She died. But it's just not, it's just not you know, God, God's into the life business. I'm not saying that every person that we pray for should get healed, although I think that's what Jesus... You know, here's, here's what I think. I mean, I'm just going to go there. Y'all all right with this? Y'all with me? Somebody sitting here sick, in a wheelchair, can't walk, quadriplegic, cancer, can't speak, can't see, can't hear. Like the saddest picture you could possibly paint. What would happen... If Jesus stood right in front of that person, what would happen? Who is Jesus to you in that situation? If Jesus, in the flesh, stood in front of that person and stretched out his hand toward that person, what would happen? Now, anything less than that, you cannot search your own self and, and end in conclusions of, of lack. Of, of I don't measure up and there's something wrong with me and there's something wrong with them. And the, you know, we just can't go there with it. I mean, I can't tell you where you're going to go in your heart and mind. That's your journey with God. I don't want to tell you what to think or how to feel. But the standard, we all know, what does anything look like when God touches it? Life. Life and only life. In Him is no darkness. Now, that's challenging. That's hard. It's hard. But, you know, I don't, I, don't wanna, I don't wanna fake this stuff. The world is starving for a body of Christ that shows them who God really is. And I don't just mean power, that's like secondary. I mean his heart toward us. I'm telling you, it's easy to love people when you know that you're loved. Those of you that are married and you withhold love until your spouse loves you. Uh-oh, maybe I should use a different example on that. Love goes first with zero expectation. God loves people that might not be with Him. God loves people that have not said, I trust you. You know what I mean? but he gave everything. The body, <clears throat> unified in love, walking in this earth. Make sense? Do you see it? Do you feel it? What does it look like in your life? You know, when you start thinking about it, okay, how do I, what does this mean for me? Where do I put this? What kind of seed am I? You know, that's the question. When you wake up, you go out the door, what kind of seed am I? What kind of seeds am I allowing to live within me? You know? And, and, then, and then we do this like Christian checklist. Did I read the word? Did I pray? Did I do my this? Did I do that? Did, did, you know, and it's like, it's like we're missing the point. Do those things, 
but let it stir something up within you. I'm telling you, those of you that are struggling with different things in your life, if you quit trying to be good enough and you understand His, his goodness and His love, it just, it's, revolution, it's revolutionary. It just is. And it's caught. No one can teach you. It, it's, you know, that confidence grows deeper and deeper and deeper into His love. I love that song. He's a firm foundation. Something, something, something. Love. <laughs> Really love that song. <clears throat> My lovely Sarah, she has something that she wanted to share. So, If I can get it out. We actually put that, Nathan, can you put those lyrics up of that song? <coughs> yeah. The, the screen, yes. Perfect. Right there. Um, so this week's been crazy between my mother-in-law, Eleanor, yeah. fighting. She's a lot better, by the way. Though, yes. My, mom. Yeah. Um, my brother sent me a picture of her sitting up in the bed. She's good. Well, not good, but better. <laughs> she's eating, so that's, that's good. But um, it's been a crazy week. They are both on the same floor. We're literally going back and forth between room to room, you know, making sure everything's good, praying, talking to people, feeling it. It's been a rough week. Um, I don't think I've ever cried more in my life because of Cheryl. I have a tissue. Um, I, don't, I don't know what it is, but I, I think it's just who she is to these people. It's not even that we're like, We've been best friends. It's just what, who she is and the love that she carried. I'm just so sad that it's gone. Um, and Clint said a lot of what I wanted to share, but seeing our church come together this week yeah. has been crazy was, amazing. Yeah. This body... If you guys are not plugged in somewhere, I'm telling you, the people here are amazing. It's been so powerful just seeing them pray and worship and be there for her. Thank you. Um, and for Eleanor, too. You know, they're all, everyone just, is, they're so connected. And if you're not connected somewhere, these are some amazing people. But so yesterday during the... Um, the funeral, which Glint did an amazing job. The worship was, it, it was perfect. If a funeral can be perfect and beautiful and amazing, it was. It, the it, worship, all the, you guys, the worship, Laura, oh, Adam. I mean, we cried and cried. I, luckily, I was sandwiched between Bethany and Kristen, and Bethany's snotting on her shirt the entire time. <laughs> We had one tissue. I, I had one tissue I already used. Split one. I peeled the layers and gave one to them. We're no, just, that, that's some love. I mean, right <laughs> use tissues. It was nuts. I mean, just crying, crying, crying because of the love. It was the love. Um, so, all that to say, during the funeral, I very, very clearly, and it was during the worship. Um, when all three of you guys were singing, I very, very clearly heard the Holy Spirit, and not to sound weird, but I felt like it was what Cheryl would, would say to us. And first of all, when, when you were singing the song, Adam, this morning, and I actually, I don't know all the words either, like Clint. It's new for us. <laughs> um, and I read the screen, and I, and I was thinking about, you know, I'm not one to come up here and share, but I was thinking about how to get out what I wanted to get out. And then I read the words and I was like, oh, this is Cheryl. Okay. This is what she embodied. And I will build my life upon your love. It is a firm foundation. And I will put my trust in you alone. 
and I will not be shaken until the very end. This is her. Will you go back a screen? Okay, so this isn't in, a, in the exact words that I heard the Holy Spirit. No, that one. Yes, that one. Um, so the Holy Spirit spoke to me very loud and clear, and I felt like it was a commission for our church. Being that, you know, we've had this church for 10 years. This is a tight group, and everybody that walks in the door that is open to this connection, this yeah. group of people, they can embody that too. It's, it's not, I don't need to say anymore. But anyways, I felt like the Holy Spirit was saying, Cheryl is gone, yes. And what she carried and that love that she carried for people and the praying that they did over people, Donald and Cheryl, they would not hesitate to pray for people. And I know that Donald will continue that on um, as he's going through healing, but she is commissioning us, church. We know this love. We know who we are in Christ. We got to be bold. Yeah. Quit holding back. Amen. And so when first I read the, you know, this screen came on first, and I was like, okay, this is what God is saying to us. Holy, there's no one like you. There's none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are. Fill me with your heart, Lord. And leave me in your love to those around me. We have got to be more bold in sharing this love, this message, this God is good. Quit waiting around. We don't need to be the preachers up here giving the message. We don't need to be the worship leaders. Everyone can share God's love. Invite them here. Invite them over to your house. Pour into someone. When you know, Like I said, just seeing everybody pour into Cheryl and Eleanor and in anyone, you know, take the time to go spend time with them. Like Laura has been there just nonstop for them. I mean, take a step, take someone out to lunch, invite them to your house, take them to small group with you, go to a movie, tell them God loves them, read a book together, whatever it looks like for you, take a step. Thank you. Show Sarah a little bit of love there.